Welcome to this presentation, Introducing Open Roads Designer. My name is Joey Lou Allen. I'm a Product Marketing Manager here at Bentley, and I want to welcome you again to the presentation, and thank you for joining in. We'll take the next several minutes and look specifically at Open Roads Designer, which is the successor product to Bentley's civil engineering products, Inroads, Geopack, MX Road, and Power Civil for Country. Um, as I said, Open Roads Designer is a, is a new generation of civil engineering product. Um, it replaces the civil engineering products we've had in the past, and it really represents a combination of those in the inclusion of new functionality and new technology so that we can broaden um, our functionality, really, and the capabilities um, in this new product line. We're going to look at several specific areas where Open Roads Designer um, helps out when it comes to the workflows and the tasks that we're faced with daily. We're going to look, first of all, at designing within reality context. All of you are familiar with, at the beginning of a project or really any project, whether it's the beginning, you have to have your existing conditions, the data that represents your existing conditions. As uh, we've moved, technology has changed and evolved over the years. The forms of data that are available to us have changed and are evolving as we, uh, again, technology advances. We are being impacted by different data types. Some would be considered big data. Um, we also now have more data types available to us. We have access to uh, data online on web services and things like that that we didn't have in the past. And through all of this, innovation is driving change. With the uh, advent of new data types and really access to those data types, we find that uh, we need to access those and we need to be able to easily consume those and compile those within a useful way um, within the context of our project so that we can design against it. And that really is what designing with reality context is all about. So let's take a look here within Open Roads Designer at designing with reality context. We see here on the screen a project. We can see the topographic uh, data there. I want you to note, first of all, as I look at this menu, there are uh, several sets of functionality within Open Roads Designer. It really represents a comprehensive suite of functionalities um, where one uh, product gives us access to doing lots of different things and consuming different data types. Now here we're going to focus in on the reality modeling tool set. You see that along the top uh, menu there. The interface is uh, more streamlined and more efficient. So let's take a look. We zoom in on our project area. You'll notice the terrain. Um, we can see both in the 2D and the 3D. We can see the topographic, the line work representing the existing interchange within that area. See the contours as we uh, take a look at that data. And so we have the terrain data and the topo data in the drawing file already. Now we first of all want to look at attaching raster images. And we've done this in the past. Open Roads Designer allows us to attach raster imagery directly to our project. That raster imagery can be geospatially located, of course, and you can see here on the screen that imagery has been attached. And that gives us a base level of, anyway, that's a way of adding additional context to our project. So now we've added in that aerial imagery. We have that available to us again in the 2D view just to add a little more context and really understanding to our project. Now, within this reality modeling tool set, we can also attach um, shape files, for example. So in this example, we'll add a little more in information into our uh, design by turning on and attaching that shape file. So now we can see the property lines overlaid on the imagery and the terrain model and the topographic survey on the screen. So we've added another level of understanding and information into our project. And all of this is being done with inside of the tool set within Open Roads Designer. So the context of our project is becoming a little more defined. Now you'll notice here there are um, a couple of views 
there are is a 2D representation of the data and a 3D representation of data. Now we're going to focus in on the 3D representation of data. We're going to attach a point cloud file and take a look at that. So we add again another level of data into our project. And you'll notice that that data is available to us in both the 2D and the 3D view. So being able to have multiple views in order to interpret and analyze that data is very important. If we can zoom out in the 3D view, you'll notice the display of the point cloud in the 3D view represents um, elevation differences. The views are independent, so we have the flexibility or the capability to modify those views independently of one another. So we'll take a look over in view one in the 2D view, and we're going to actually turn off the point cloud in our view one just to simply clarify that data, but it remains in view three. So again, having the ability to modify those views independently so that we can understand the data is very important. Now we'll go a step farther. Now that we have that point cloud attached, we want to modify the display of it. So we'll focus on the 3D view and we want to change the elevation range. So you'll see the color coding um, in the 3D view, and we can make modifications to that simply by the interface, by changing the elevation range, by changing the type of colorization that's involved. And so we'll make a quick change. Again, we'll go back to the red and blue display. And all of this ultimately is, again, to add context of our existing condition to our project and give us the ability to analyze it and understand that data. Okay? So we see now the 2D view and we see the 3D view. We have uh, brought in imagery. We've attached a shape file for the property um, boundaries and we've attached a point cloud data file. We've looked at how we can modify that point cloud data. We've talked about how there's a 2D view and a 3D view and those are independent and they allow us to interact with the data independently and allow us to analyze data from different perspectives so that we can understand that data. Now, as we zoom in on the 2D view and take a look, we finally want to look at a, uh, an additional type of data, and we're going to attach in a reality model, a 3MX file. And we'll grab that 3MX file, we'll attach it to the design file, open that up, now that you can see that display behind the dialog, I'll close that, and then let's take a look. So what we see here now, in addition to the other data types we've looked at um, within our design, we've now attached this reality mesh, which is an output from context capture. So the reality mesh was created originally from aerial photographs, processed in context capture, then output as a .3MX file, and then attached to our Open Roads Designer design file that we're looking at here. So within Open Roads Designer, again, within the reality modeling tool set, we have the ability to consume multiple data types in order to effectively understand our site and our existing condition. All right, now we're going to look at rapidly modeling design intent. Open Roads Designer allows us to design and model in three dimensions. It also allows us to capture, store, and impart our design intent to that model, which in turn increases the efficiency. The tool set in Open Roads Designer is intended to allow us to model with our design intent um, to increase our efficiency, to create content that we can leverage across our organization, and to allow us to model, again, with intelligence, so that changes downstream are much more effective um, and can be managed better with faster speed. Now, modeling in Open Roads Designer and imparting design intent into that model really is available to us through uh, alignments, when we create horizontal and vertical alignments, when we model corridors, intersections, our drainage networks, and ultimately, the inclusion of our design intent into the model that we create allows us to capture um, data, 3D or 2D models, with intelligence. So the design intent imparted to our 3D model can be captured and stored as a civil cell so that we can reuse it over and over again, again, with our design intent stored. So let's take a look at a few examples 
of rapidly modeling in Open Roads Designer and the inclusion of design intent in that model. So here we have um, a horizontal and a vertical alignment. The alignment is about 9,800 meters long, that's about six miles, and we're going to build a four-lane corridor along that. So on the 2D view on the left-hand side, we'll follow the prompts, we'll select our template that we're going to use, You'll see the library of templates that we can select from. We'll select the four-lane divided template. We'll data point, follow through the prompts. We'll select our start and our stop stations where we want to begin and end the corridor. And then we'll data point through the rest of the prompts. And so now, after following through those prompts, our corridor is processed. You can see that in the left-hand view and the right-hand view in three dimensions. Now, Open Roads Designer, again, is an interactive model. And we can view that from different perspectives. So on the right-hand side in the 3D model, we can actually modify the view. We can turn off the triangles in the existing terrain model if we'd like. So we can visualize and see our roadway corridor more clearly. So again, we're able to interactively, using our design intent, build, analyze, and design our roadway corridor. Now, also, we can open up an end of, uh, in this third view in this case, and we want to look at the cross sections down that roadway corridor. So the model is live, and we've opened up the cross section view, which is a dynamic or live view into the roadway corridor. And then we can step along that corridor to take a look at the results in a cross section view. Again, it gives us the opportunity to interact with the data so that we can analyze it and understand it more clearly. We can view it from different perspectives. So we'll step along the corridor and we can see the resulting cross sections there. You'll notice the planimetric line shown us in all three views or all two views where the cross sections are. Now in this example, we're going to extend modeling and the inclusion of design intent a little bit farther. In this example, we're actually going to use geometry, horizontal and vertical geometry. And I want to be sure to highlight how the inclusion of design intent in the model, how effective and powerful that is. So we have our corridor that we just built. Again, we've got uh, the three views open, the plan view, the 3D view, and the uh, cross-section view. Now what we're going to build here is just a simple intersecting roadway. Notice as I draw that horizontal alignment, I snap that with a perpendicular snap onto the main line. And now we can tell that there has been design intent imparted to that element. It has been told to remain perpendicular to that baseline along the four-lane roadway corridor. Okay? So we're constructing this horizontal element, ultimately to build a horizontal and a vertical element, but we want to be sure that the model is intelligent enough so that if adjustments are made, our horizontal and vertical will um, follow along properly. Now we're going to look at defining the profile for this intersecting alignment. So we've opened up the profile view. Again, we can see the uh, cross section or the cross section view. In the profile view, we can see the terrain model. You can see that dashed line that represents the active terrain. And now what we want to do for this intersecting vertical alignment, we want to be able to see the roadway. So simply by selecting that corridor, all of the surfaces, and these aren't truly surfaces, they're componentized uh, mesh elements. We're able to select those from our roadway corridor, and we're going to display them in the profile view. And I'm just selecting them one by one, and we'll select that. We'll data point to place them in the profile view, and then we'll take a look at the profile view to see the results. So the interaction of the data, and again, this is a design modeling environment so that our, in, our design intent can be included, not just graphics. We've now taken that roadway corridor. We're displaying it in our intersecting profile, and now we're going to create the actual vertical alignment. And we're not going to just create a standalone vertical alignment. We're going to create a vertical alignment constructed relative to that four-lane corridor. So as I begin to build the profile, I'll snap to the crown of the uh, corridor. So I'll snap that. Then I'm going to draw a vertical alignment or a vertical element across that roadway surface, snapping it to the edge of the pavement. Now doing this constructs that vertical element, but it constructs it with a relationship. And you'll see those two um, icons on either end of the vertical element. That's an indication that that element is ruled to that cross slope of that pavement. 
Now I'll continue on. I'll create a additional vertical element, and I'll just draw that out at a at a set slope to the end of the horizontal alignment. So we've got two vertical elements at this point. The first has been ruled to the cross slope of the pavement. The other is just a straight grade out to the end. Now I'm going to go ahead and just insert a small vertical curve between the two, and we'll just key in um, <clears throat> five for that initially. We'll take a look at it, and we can make a modification and turn that, create that as three. We'll trim those elements out, the incoming and the outgoing verticals, and then we want to join them together. Now I'm basically creating a vertical alignment out of three elements. But the key here is to note and remember that those, that the first element was constructed with design intent within the model. So it is taking advantage of my design intent so that it will be controlled by the cross slope and the location of that four lane roadway corridor. We activate that profile. We can now see it in the 3D model view. We can see it as it follows the cross slope of the pavement out across the shoulder. We can rotate that up in the model. Remember, the model is a live model representation of my design and my design intent. So I have the ability to interpret and review it at any time. Now, <clears throat> after creating those elements, and we see the horizontal, and we see the baseline element, what happens if a modification is made to the baseline element in the horizontal plane? So I'll just take the baseline, center line of the roadway corridor, and I'm just going to graphically pick that up and move it just so that we can see the changes. So I've taken that four-lane baseline of the baseline of the corridor now, and we see those changes. And you'll note we see the horizontal and the vertical change. We've seen the location of that change horizontally. And uh, as we look back in the plan view, you'll note that it has maintained its perpendicular relationship to that baseline. Okay? So in horizontal plane, the design intent I imparted to that horizontal has been maintained. Now let's see what happens to the vertical. So we take a look at that vertical. We note again that it was created to maintain a, a, a cross slope with the pavement. So what happens when the cross slope of that pavement changes? We we'll browse into the template that's being used in this roadway corridor, and we're just going to go into that template and make a modification to the cross slope, and we want to note event fundamentally what happens. So we'll change the cross slope from 2 to 5%, and we'll even go ahead and let's just change the width. And we'll make that width 5 as well. So we're going to change the cross slope horizontally and vertically within the roadway corridor. We can see that in the template. We'll click OK. We'll reprocess the corridor. The corridor is going to update. Now, that's great. The corridor updated, but what happened to my intersecting alignment? Now let's take a look at it in the profile. Notice as I select it, notice the cross slope is now 5%. Notice the width is 5%. Because our model was created using design intent. The decisions I made based off of my engineering judgment have been now stored in those elements. So when modifications are made in the model to really the model itself, in this case the roadway corridor, those changes are propagated and those and that design intent is maintained um, throughout the design process. Now that we've looked at modeling design intent, let's take a look at integrating multiple disciplines and how Open Roads Designer allows us to bring together data, three-dimensional model data, from different disciplines. Now, integrating data from different disciplines, of course, that improves collaboration and the common modeling environment within Bentley software um, allows us to use that data interactively and share data between uh, bridge software like Open Bridge Modeler and Open Roads Designer. Also, it allows us to reduce the risk. We're able to um, visually see um, areas that may be of concern that we may need to uh, make changes to within the design model. And also it allows us to find conflicts earlier within the process. Again, we've all experienced what happens when um, our dr proposed drainage network conflicts with existing utilities, for example, or the footing of a bridge pier conflicts with um, a subgrade 
drainage structure or the roadway itself, maybe the alignments conflict. Integrating multiple dis disciplines and having a common modeling uh, environment allows us, again, to share data that's pertinent and relevant to our project so that we can, again, ultimately see and understand that data more effectively, which in turn allows us to make better engineering decisions. So let's take a look at an example in Open Roads Designer. <clears throat> Here we are in Open Roads Designer. We have a proposed interchange. You can see that on the screen. And we can just take a look there. We've got the existing ground and the proposed roadway corridors of the, uh, of the interchange. The data is 3D, so we can flip that up, take a look at the uh, specific corridors, the flyover there along the one side. And again, you see the terrain model and you see that data. Now, in terms of understanding the data, we want to be able to access additional pieces of information. So Open Roads Designer integrates directly with Gint, and so we'll move over to the geotechnical tools, and we're going to just reference in a uh, set of Gint data, so the bore log data directly from Gint, we're just referencing that in. Although the geotechnical tools allow you to connect to a Gint database so that you can extra act extract data and utilize that. We've now displayed that log, bore log information within our design model. We can literally select those three-dimensional elements and we can see the lithology details at that location. The data is geospatially correct, so the X, the Y is exactly correct, the Zs are correct. We can analyze that data. Again, that gives us a more clear picture of where the bore logs were, what type of um, soil material happens to be in that area, and the horizontal locations of that data, so that we can, again, coordinate better um, when it comes to making engineering decisions. In addition to that, we're going to attach in a bridge model as well for one of the flyover ramps. This is a bridge model that was produced in Open Bridge Modeler. And uh, it was produced using the Open Roads Designer Alignment and Terrain Model. And we can see that model, or that bridge model now referenced in. And we can rotate that around. And again, just take a look visually at that um, ramp in context with the rest of the entire interchange. So we can zoom in. We can take a look, rotate the view around. We can see the bridge deck the piers, the abutments, the footings underneath, and we can uh, very simply evaluate the location of those piers, which we see a problem there, in it, as it relates to um, that roadway. So just the inclusion of that data, the collaboration and the sharing of that data in one place gives us, again, the opportunity to fully understand the elements within our project. Now, in addition to the bridge and the geotechnical data, we can add in uh, storm drain data. So we're going to zoom out and pan away from the interchange a little bit to the roadway extension a little farther down the alignment. And then we're going to go over and change, and we're going to go look at the subsurface utility tool set. And we're going to open up and include a drainage network within this uh, model. We'll change the view, first of all, so that we can see uh, a transparent view, so we'll be able to see the drainage network underneath. Open Roads Designer contains a set of tools for subsurface utilities, so you can design and model your storm drainage network within Open Roads Designer, as well as lay out your corridors, produce your plans, and so forth. Okay, So we've referenced in that storm drainage network. We'll now just zoom down and, uh, or pan down and zoom into that area to take a look at it within our roadway corridor so that we can see the two together. We can rotate that view. <clears throat> we can modify the display of the view if we need to. So now we see that drainage network relative to our roadway corridor. So again, we can modify the view. We can turn off 
the corridor itself, if we want to focus squarely in on the drainage network, we can see the run of that storm drainage network along the length of that four-lane corridor. So integrating three-dimensional model data from multiple disciplines, again, being able to do that easily and effectively is important. Open Roads Designer allows us to do that and allows us, again, to really um, create a composite or integrated multidiscipline model so that we can really understand how the various parts of a design model or of a project are coming together and be sure and verify the interaction of that data. Now let's take a look at how Open Roads Designer allows us to effectively adapt to changes. Now we're all aware and accustomed to the inherent need to make changes within our uh, within civil design. So uh, let's take a look at how Open Roads Designer. We've already seen an example previously how Open Roads Designer, a corridor, for example, will change if the horizontal alignment changes. In the upcoming examples, we're going to take a look at some more corridor modifications. We'll look at how a pavement thickness can be changed within the corridor without editing the base uh, or rerunning the corridor. We'll also look at how changes in the corridor, such as a change in a shoulder slope or a shoulder width, how those changes get applied in plans that have already been created as well. So in this example, as we get started, we're first of all, we see the corridor here on the right-hand side. We see the 3D representation of it, the dynamic section, and the 2D view. So we'll zoom in on the dynamic section. And in this scenario, the pavement thickness needs to be modified. The corridor has been designed, it's been modeled, but for some reason the traffic volume has increased, maybe the project has lagged in time frame and traffic volume has been has increased and we need to modify the pavement layer. So we'll open up that existing corridor, we don't have to rerun the corridor, we'll open it up, we'll zoom in and we'll take a look at that template drop being used in the corridor and we'll note on the points so we'll take a look at those points along the bottom of the base layer, open it up. Notice there's a parametric label on those points. And that parametric label then allows us to modify, in this case, the depth of those pavement layers without having, again, to rerun the corridor itself. So now we're going to open up the corridor, browse in, and we'll go ahead and create a parametric constraint from the dialog box. Open up that dialog, move it over to the side. We'll zoom in in the 3D model so that we can see changes. And then we will select the start where we want the pavement width to change from. Then we'll pick the label, which was pavement for depth. So we'll cycle through that, select that label. And again, that controls the depth of the base layer. And we notice the value currently is 0.152. We'll modify that to 2 tenths. Change it in the dialog box first, then we'll data point through the prompts, zoom into the cross-section view so that we can clearly see the change, and again, data point through the prompts and allow the corridor to reprocess, and note the change in the dynamic cross-section. So we'll see that change happen. So in, uh, in terms of Open Roads Designer, it is a model-centric environment so that when we modify the model itself, the changes are propagated into the dynamic section. And we can see those live and uh, automatically. In this second scenario, we're going to continue modifying a corridor. So we again see the dynamic sections and we could step through that corridor looking at those sections if we like. We're going to modify a shoulder segment. So I'm going to go place a temporary dimension line in the dynamic section so that we can see and evaluate the current state of that shoulder. We see it's 2.2 meters wide and it's a 4% cross slope. That's the existing condition or that's the current state of that shoulder in our current model. And we want to make a modification of that. So we'll adjust the 3D view so that we can see it clearly. Again, we're going to modify the template drop within the corridor. So I'll open up that template drop and then I'll zoom in onto that shoulder and I'll select the outermost shoulder point. And then we're going to modify the constraints on that point so that we can change the width 
We'll change that from 2.2 to 4 meters, and we'll change the cross slope to 6%. We'll apply that within the template, close that dialog box, we'll see the change in the template, click OK, and then the corridor reprocesses and updates. Then we'll see those changes as they're propagated into the model, and we'll see the dynamic section along with the temporary dimension update as well. So we're able to modify the model directly. Now let's look at what happens to plans that have been created. So in this scenario, we've got cross-section sheets created. We'll go take a look at the cross-section model view. We can see the existing cross-section with a 4% shoulder cross slope and a 4 to 1 side slope, a fill slope tied to existing ground. Now we change back into our design model where a corridor exists. We'll edit that template drop, and you'll note on the right-hand side, as we're editing this template, notice the cross-section views in that window behind the dialog. We'll change the shoulder slope once again in the template drop within the corridor. We'll change the fill slope, just browse down and edit that tie point to existing ground, change that from a 4 to 1 slope to a 3 to 1 slope, and OK that. As I said, in the 3D model view, you can actually see the location of the cross-section, so the cross-sections, the cross-section sheets, are a dynamic representation of the actual model. And so now as we look at that model, we can see the cross slopes of the shoulder being changed to 6% and the shoulder or the side slope being changed to a 3 to 1. So when it comes to adapting to change in Open Roads Designer, the model-centric environment allows us to make modifications, allows us to make uh, design decisions directly in the model, and that allows us to propagate those changes from the model out to our plan sheets. So that again, we have a comprehensive and a cohesive modeling environment so that the data is consistent throughout our design process. As we continue on, let's take a look at how Open Roads Designer improves our project deliverables. Now, as we all know, um, two-dimensional plan sets are still typical and are still required in many situations, but three-dimensional models have become a reality. The effectiveness and the usefulness of that three-dimensional model has been proven in multiple cases, whether it's delivering uh, construction data, whether it is uh, doing a three-dimensional dyna dynamic review of the model um, during design or before construction. So the use of 3D data um, is becoming more commonplace. The use of that 3D data is expanding. The purpose and usage of that data can be used for, as I mentioned, uh, design review, for uh, asset management after construction. Um, it can be used for providing data, digital design data to the field for construction, for machine guidance and those types of things. So let's take a look at how Open Roads Designer provides that three-dimensional model data and how we can utilize it um, in, in some of these ways, specifically in producing our plan sets. So here we are in Open Roads Designer. We're going to take a look at plan production in Open Roads Designer. We have our horizontal alignments on the screen. You can see those there. Uh, you see the interchange and then the corridor from west to east. Notice the sheet index. Open Roads Designer provides a sheet index so that we can have access to the sheets quickly and easily. So uh, we're going to go through and create some plan uh, views first of all. Now we begin creating sheets in Open Roads Designer by creating what we call named boundaries. So we're going to define the boundaries of these sheets first. So as we work through here, we'll give the name, uh, give the boundary set a name, plan clip. We'll give a name to the group of boundaries that we're creating, Route 97 extension. So we're just going to populate this dialog box, and we'll define the start and the stop stations for where we want to begin and end our sheet boundaries. The dialog box will just, again, manage the stop location. The length and the offsets are all the property of this um, dialog box. Now, we're just creating the plan boundaries at this point. So we'll click into the view. 
You'll see those boundaries created along the alignment as we've selected that alignment. And now we'll just data point in the screen to accept that placement. So we've created the boundaries that will represent the plan view within our plan and profile sheets. Okay? So that's the first step in this. Now we're going to create uh, the profile views. So we'll open up the profile view. We're going to change the exaggeration so that we can clearly see the existing ground and the proposed vertical alignment. We'll zoom in. Now we can see the vertical alignment along with the existing grounds. And now we'll go back to place named boundary. But this time we're going to place them in the civil profile. Again, we follow the basic steps that we did before for the plan. We'll give, the, give it a name. We'll give the plan group. We'll use the same plan group. We'll modify the name of the view. Now we turn on the toggle to create the drawings. Data point in the profile view. And again, we can preview the location of these boundaries that we're creating. And now we've opened up the Create Drawing dialog box. Many of the settings are already set. We're going to add each of the sheets to the sheet index, and then they will process. So we are creating the sheets now based off of the plan view, uh, or the plan bound boundaries that we've created, and the profile boundaries that we've created. And now once that's processed, we see the sheets on the screen. We can see the plan view and the profile view. We go look at our sheet index. You can see all of the individual sheets laid out for us in that index. We can scroll through those. We can browse into each of the planned views or each of the sheets specifically just by clicking through the list. We can go and look at the actual model views for each of those um, views independently. So we can flip back and forth between our uh, model view and our plan view. We'll go back into our uh, design model view. Now, if we want to update the plan view in the plan sheets, we can do that by simply adding in reference files. So that uh, view in the plan view of the boundary, so we're going to add in drainage, add in a bridge, add in the uh, corridor itself. We'll add those in. Now, the boundary and the sheet itself is simply a dynamic view into this model. Now, by flipping back to the plan and profile sheets, we see the plan view updated. And we can now see the corridor in that plan sheet. So we see that change. Um, again, the plan sheets are really, all of the construction drawings are a dynamic view into the model. Now we're going to demonstrate and take a look at creating cross sections in Open Roads Designer. So we'll change files. We've got the corridor here. We've moved into that corridor file. We'll go back to the drawing production. Ribbon, we'll open up the place named boundary, and this time we're going to place boundaries for civil cross sections. We'll pick the drawing seed, and the seed file contains my typical standards that I want to use. Give the group a name for cross sections. We'll let that process. We'll define the start and the stop locations along the corridor. We graphically selected that, picked up the station range for the corridor, then we can make modifications to the start and the stop stations in the dialog box. We'll be sure and turn on the bottom clearance so that we have uh, enough clearance for the section views within the sheet border. And we turned off the control points. Now we get to create drawing dialog box. We want to be sure and turn on add to sheet index. So we have a compilation of sheets within our sheet index, and you'll see that shortly. Those section views will process. You'll see those processing along the bottom of the screen. And those cross-section sheets are being created, uh, compiled, and stored within the sheet index. So now we can see we are in one of the cross-section sheets. You can see that. You can see the sheet index along the left-hand pane. Just as with the plan and the profiles, we can move between the sheets by just simply picking it in the sheet index. The annotation is in place based off of our standards that we were using. So we have annotated and created those cross-section sheets and compiled them within a sheet index. Within the sheet models, just as before, we can move 
um, throughout the sheets and the individual clipped model. Change the view within that model so we get a little clearer representation of the annotation and the, the uh, cross-section line work. And again, we can go back into our design model, which you see here, and notice how we as we move between the sheets and the sheet index, we are actually moving between the appropriate DGNs. So the sheet index is a compilation of sheets relative to our project, and we're able to quickly navigate through those plan sheets via the index and take a look at those. And now we're back into the um, design file itself. We're back in that. And we go back into the sheet index. If we want to plot our sheets, we can do that directly from the sheet index. We'll select our print style that we want to use. We see the list of sheets that we've created in the sheet index, and we can selectively pick the actual sheets that we want to plot. And we'll just pick several of those, pick a few of the plan views, a few of the cross-section views, then go ahead and plot those to PDF. So we're now processing those sheets using our PDF plot driver, and you can see we have 17 sheets selected to print, and we are processing through those. We're up to 12 of 17 now. So plan production in Open Roads Designer really is, again, a um, model-based methodology for plan production. It means that as the model changes, as we add in disciplines, um, whether it's drainage or whether it's a roadway corridor, whatever it may be, that the plan sets or the cross-section views are all updated for that. As we make modifications to a roadway corridor, now you can see the PDFs that have been created. And we can, again, we bundle those all together into one PDF. And we can see that output here. So Open Roads Designer, again, it's really is based a model-centric environment. The plan production is really based off the model. If the model changes, the plans change. If we modify the corridor, we change a cross slope, we modify a side slope, we change the pavement depth. Those changes within the model are propagated to, um, to the cross sections, to the construction drawings themselves, all right? And a handy sheet index is in place so that we can access as we create those drawings quickly and easily. Um, to look at and take advantage and, and evaluate those. Now that we've seen the dynamic plan production and the updating of those plans in Open Roads Designer, let's take a look at visualizing our designs in Open Roads Designer. Open Roads Designer has tools directly built in to uh, visualize designs, the tools that were natively in MicroStation are available in Open Roads Designer. Open Roads Designer also integrates directly with LuminRT if it's installed. The integration with Open Roads and the Open Roads data is, uh, is a uh, neat, tight integration. And LuminRT supports multiple styles of traffic simulation. There are tools to place traffic. There are tools to incorporate VizSim um, scripts for the traffic that uh, simulation within VizSim. It also includes articulated vehicles and tools for lighting. So here, let's take a look. Here we are in Open Roads Designer. We see our um, interchange that we've been working with. Again, from the menu, we can select the visualization ribbon. As I said, there are tools that were native into MicroStation in previous versions are directly in Open Roads Designer. If LuminRT is installed, you see it integrates directly on the tab. We can export our design out, and here you see that uh, result from Open Roads Designer. In LuminRT, you have the ability, again, as I mentioned, to place traffic. You see that here. There are tools for placing multiple lanes of traffic within the scene. You have the ability to uh, quickly and easily uh, manipulate the traffic patterns. So you have the ability to add that animation directly into the model. And that's a model produced originally out of Open Roads Designer. You have the ability to stage animation of particular areas within the model that you like to highlight. As I mentioned before, articulated vehicles are included. 
You can see the truck going around the ramp here. LuminRT also allows you to place trains, uh, trees. You can control the lighting and other environmental parameters. Here you see lighting. So we can take a look at a project site in the nighttime based off the lighting setup. An important thing too is that LuminRT supports 3D line styles. So here we have some 3D line styles, some barrels, a rail fence, and a guardrail. Now when those are exported into LuminRT, you can see what the results are. So the resulting model is very uh, robust and very lifelike. There's also virtual reality output, which you can see here. And then finally, using large data sets is easy with LuminRT. The integration with Open Roads is um, direct and, and quite easy to use.